give them what you have and let the med school say, yes, that's fine, we'll accept it, or no, that's not okay, and then you'll know. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 339. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, where I take your non-traditional questions and answer them here on the podcast. If you're a non-traditional student and you would like some help, some free help, your question answered here on the podcast, go over to premedhangout.com. Ask your nice, detailed question in the group there and use the hashtag OPM question. We'll bring that po- uh, question onto the podcast and answer that. Answer it here. Before we jump in, though, I want to talk about the MCAT minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. As a non-traditional student, you are busy. You're busier than busy, potentially. Family, kids, uh, full-time job outside of medicine, career changer, trying to figure out how to go back, uh, trying to figure out your life. And the one thing that you have to squeeze into all of that as well is the MCAT. If you go over to blueprintmcat.com, our sponsors for this episode, they can hook you up with amazing free resources, including my favorite thing, because you guys tell me it's your favorite thing, their study planner tool, drag and drop interface, allows you to adjust on the fly because life gets in the way. Go over to blueprintmcat.com, sign up for their free account, use the study planner tool, tell it when you're planning on taking the MCAT, what your schedule looks like, your availability for full lengths, all that kind of stuff, and it will customize a schedule for you. Again, that's blueprintmcat.com. Thank you, Blueprint MCAT, for sponsoring the old pre-meds podcast. So our question today is uh, is an interesting one, not super specific to non-trads, but definitely something that a lot of students have an issue with right now. Our question answer says, Dr. Gray, I went back to take post back science classes in 2020 and 2021, and courses were online. Shocker, COVID. My professors were pretty distant and seemed hesitant to write LORs because they don't, quote, know me. They didn't hold office hours, and I was working a full-time plus two more part-time jobs. There's some non-trad specific in there. I have a master's degree, but not in science. One is in behavioral health. I could easily get a reference from a teacher there. Is there any chance I can apply without the science teacher LOR? LOR. I've put off applying for two years due in part to this. This is the most frustrating part of this process for me. Number one, that uh, that medical schools have, have all of these varying requirements and there's so much confusion around what do I need to do? What can I do? What can't I do? Where can I potentially find some, uh, some optional things that I may do? And ultimately, what this student should be doing And what you should be doing if you're in a similar situation where you just don't know the answer, don't just delay for two years, right? That's two years of income later on down the line. That's two years of your life that you've put on hold due in part to, maybe it's not the full story, but in part to this fear around these letters of recommendations. It's very easy. Pick up the phone. Hey, med school, I'm really interested in applying to you. Hey, as you know, COVID, virtual no, no strong uh, connection being built with these letter writers. It's not going to be a good letter. You're not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. I'm a non-traditional student. What are my options? Here are where I can get you a strong letter of recommendation from. Can I apply with this letter from my master's degree? Can I apply with a letter from a, a work supervisor? Work supervisor. Can I apply with a letter from blah blah blah? Give them what you have and let the med school say, yes, that's fine, we'll accept it, or no, that's not okay, and then you'll know. The schools that are most flexible are going to be the most non-trad friendly because they understand as a non-traditional student, you are going to have challenges around meeting all of the requirements for all of these things because you've been out of school for a long time. And then with COVID being virtual, it's really hard to build those relationships. And the schools don't want a letter that just says, hey, this student did uh, great in my class and got an A. I never interacted with them. I don't know their personality. I don't know their communication skills. I don't know whether or not they'll be a good doctor, but they got an A in my class, right? The, The schools don't want that letter. And so if you can frame it around, hey, to get you a letter that truly shows who I am, I can't use these professors because they don't know me. I never had the opportunity to interact with them. But do you know who I had a chance to interact with? My master's professors. I can get a letter from them. What do you say? All right, just go to the schools. Go to all the schools that you're potentially applying to and say yay or nay. 
Can I apply? Can I not? And just see what they say. We work with so many non-traditional students at Medical School HQ. A lot of them are in similar situations where they have to ask for some variations in what are typically the requirements for letters of rec. And uh, I always mention one school, they used to have it, I don't know if they still do, I haven't checked in a while, uh, but Sam Houston State, the, the medical school there, very clearly had on their requirements page, and I wish every medical school would do this, and maybe it's kind of a mission that we'll be on uh, with some of our staff, is emailing the schools and just say, hey, check out this thing that Sam Houston State does, do you think you could... Um, provide some clarity on your website as well because med schools are scared to put stuff out in public because then then they're setting the requirement or the lack of requirements or the uh, the adjustments they'll make they're they're making that public which opens them up to liability that's that's the problem is med schools are scared of being sued unfortunately because it happens because we have a very sue happy culture but <laughs> I digress. Sam Houston State very clearly says, hey, if you've been out of, uh, of undergrad or whatever their language says for more than a year, I think it is, these these letter of recommendation requirements kind of go out the window. We understand that getting letters of recommendations from professors you haven't had in a while can be challenging. So give us what you got, right? Very clear, very transparent. I wish every medical school did that. So uh, for this student, right, at the end of the day, you're just going to have to reach out to the schools. You're going to have to talk to them. You're going to have to give them enough information that that doesn't just say, hey, I can't get what you want, but I can't get what you want. Here's what I can give you and let them tell you yes or no or if possible, whatever, right? So hopefully that's helpful. A short, sweet one for you all today. Don't forget, get to check out our sponsor, blueprintmcat.com with that free study planner tool over at blueprintmcat.com. Thank you, Blueprint MCAT, for sponsoring the pre, uh, the old pre-meds podcast. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the old pre-meds podcast.